When do you become a collector? When you have more than two or more than one? Or more than three? Is it more than three? Then I'm barely a collector. Hi, I'm Keanu Reeves, co-founder of Arch Motorcycle. Let's take a look. Where I grew up in Toronto, every summer, motorcycle gangs would come into a, a place called Yorkville. Those bikes, those people, those pirates, I think touch that 10 year old kid in a way. I learned how to ride a motorcycle when I was doing a film in Munich. This young woman had an Enduro and I asked her if she'd teach me how to ride it. And when I came back to Los Angeles, this is probably around 86, 87, uh, I got my first motorcycle. So this is where uh, it all happens. Kind of backstage, if you will. We have some client bikes here being worked on um, and assembled. And then personally, this is the second motorcycle I bought in Los Angeles around 1987. It's a 1973 Mark IIA Norton Commando. Had a lot of good times with this motorcycle. And uh, I just grew up really loving Norton's, the upswept pipe. It's a, an English twin. Norton was renowned for the feather bed frame, which means that the engine is rubber mounted, kind of taking a lot of the vibration out of it. It's got a nice sound, smells good when it heats up the oil, and uh, got a lot of miles on that motorcycle. In films, I rode a motorcycle in Chain Reaction and a film called My Own Private Idaho. In My Own Private Idaho, the gentleman came out with a canary yellow Norton. And the guy's like, so do you know this bike? And well, this is how you know. I was like, I got it. <laughs> that was a fun day to ride that bike and ride with River Phoenix. What about John Wick? Didn't you ride in that? Yeah. So <laughs> recently in John Wick, Chapter three. Yeah, I got onto the bike, so I, I had to ride it down an alleyway. And yeah, I did ride it down a bridge. And there's a fight sequence. Yeah, I rode in John Wick 3. Norton's, the year that I bought the 73, the shift patterns on the other side of the motorcycle in a different direction. So that took a second. And then when it came to the reality of the Norton, it was amazing. You know, it's not a super scary fast, you know, especially for a young rider. You know, I didn't get on a motorcycle that's 100 horsepower and I can go 150 miles an hour on it. I can do that now, but I've never gone 150. I've, I'm actually, I haven't actually gone that fast. I'm like in the 135 range. <laughs> This is the Ducati that was in the Matrix Reloaded. Spectacular bike, beautiful motorcycle. Ducati did a special green, a kind of Matrix green, which makes it kind of trick. It's got Matrix Reloaded on it. Carrie Ann Moss Roy, who had never ridden a motorcycle in her life, learned how to ride a Ducati 998. Wow. Well, the motorcycle was with the Wachowskis, who were the writers and directors of the Matrix trilogy. We have become custodians of the motorcycle, and it's really cool to be able to show you this bike. We'll go through it and make sure everything works, and the next time we're at the track, I think we'll take it out. You know, when I work, or when I work on films, you know, in the past, they would, you know, have contracts that said you couldn't ride a motorcycle. You know, you're an asset and they don't want you to crash. So I would, sometimes I would pay attention to that and sometimes I didn't. Um, oops, can't help it. It's not difficult to communicate what it's like to ride a motorcycle because, you know, if you've ridden a bicycle, you kind of get it. In a motorcycle, you're a little more vulnerable, so the stakes are higher, which I like. For me, it's the visceral quality of it, the vibration, the wind, the sound, and then it's just really a great place to think, to feel, to get away. You know, when I don't ride a motorcycle, I go through withdrawal. It's not good for my health. 
<laughs> I had a, a Harley Davidson, a Dyna Wide Glide, which was an amazing motorcycle, and I was looking to personalize it. And then I was introduced to Gard Hollinger, who owned a custom building company called Chop Rods. We ended up working together, and he ended up building a custom bike. He took the Harley engine and then built a motorcycle around it and that became the prototype for the Arch motorcycle. So this is a 2019 KR GT1. The company makes over 200 parts for the motorcycle. It's all billet aluminum. We manufacture those parts, but we also work with some high-end other companies, third parties. So we have an Olean's high-end front suspension, South African company called BST for carbon wheels, we're working with a great company out of Wisconsin called S&S for the uh, power plant. What else we got? We got some Michelin tires, which are pretty awesome. We work with an Italian company called Rizoma. Signals, mirrors, uh, foot controls. Um, we also make the seat custom for the owner, so it's, you know, fitted. Let's see if we can start this thing. Sound good, they ride amazing. So in terms of the company, definitely I'm involved with the, the dream of the company, the ambition of the company. I can't assemble a motorcycle and you don't want me to fix it. I can test ride it and I can tell you what's wrong and I can, you know, what quality control, how do we want it to feel, what are we doing? I'm not doing any of the drawing, Guard is doing that, but he'll show me and we'll, you know, talk about it. And then infrastructure and what's the voice of the company, what, who are we, how are we, what are we presenting, and kind of work with that. So, if the GRG T1 is a performance cruiser, then this motorcycle is like a performance cruiser sport. What makes it sport? So. The riding position. Uh, instead of having forward controls, we have a mid control. It has a different rake. On the 1S, it's brought in a little bit, so handling is a little different. Also, uh, we're gonna have different wheels, obviously different body work. So it's got some other kind of developments going on in terms of tank design. We're still working on our final exhaust system for it. And then there's a whole bunch of other design elements that are going on under here. We have a new uh, instrument panel. The frame is different than the KR GT1. Uh, it's not exposed and what's going on inside is a little bit different. We also like to do uh, track rides. So there's the ponies for when we uh, want to go fast on a racetrack. I'm riding the uh, ZX-10 here, the Ninja. Guard's got the R1. Ross, who works at the company, he's dealing with the Aprilia. And that might be Simons. Really amazing, all of them amazing motorcycles. And it's really fun just to, to get together. We do a lot of riding with the arches and go on arch events and ride all through the Santa Monica mountains and, and that's great. But we all love riding. And if you're on a track, you don't have to worry about traffic <laughs> or speed limits. Yeah, let's see, bikes that I haven't ridden that I wouldn't mind. Well, I mean, of course, the Vincent Black Shadow. And there's a couple of examples of those. Probably some 20s Bruff Superiors. I've never been on a MotoGP, a modern MotoGP motorcycle. That might be kind of fun, you know? That'd be insane. Oh my God. Anyway, I've never ridden one of those. Well, if I get on a Bruff and a Vincent Black Shadow, and get the chance to ride a MotoGP bike, that'd be pretty awesome. What we have here is what we call the Method 143. This is a prototype, so you can't jump on this yet and ride it. It's, it's kind of like a, how the automobile company does concept cars. This is kind of a concept motorcycle that we're looking to make into production. It will eventually have a carbon fiber monocoque frame. 
You can start to see the idea of that coming down here on the down member of the frame. This will become carbon fiber. The power plant is an s and but it's gonna be ridiculous. It's uh, 143 cubic inches. It's a little futuristic. We like the idea of just how we're overlaying, integ integrating different materials, the aluminum, the carbon fiber, going into the elements of the skins of the seat. And then just some of the design elements are pretty spectacular. BST is gonna be developing a new wheel for us. It'll be outrageous. This motorcycle is outrageous, but that's part of the fun. Advice to a new rider. I mean, if you're in a kid and you're like starting off on a little mini bike, I mean, that's you're gonna, people are gonna show you what to do. If you're a young adult um, and you're not dirt riding and you wanna get on the street, take a class. You know, start with a small CC, get a bike that you can get your feet on the ground, something that's not gonna freak you out, you know? If you're not gonna do all of that, just don't go crazy. Like if you've never ridden a motorcycle, don't get, you know, a sport bike that's got a lot of horsepower. But yeah, be comfortable on it. Don't get too much power that, you know, can overwhelm you too quickly and uh, have fun.